Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm so excited and I give thanks to God for the opportunity we have again for us to fellowship together, to break the bread of life, and that bread is Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank God for you, and I thank God for everyone all over the world, wherever you are, that you are tuned in to this broadcast right now. But before we go on, let me ask you to do something for me, you know, quickly. Just tag somebody, call somebody, or share with somebody, you know. Send it to somebody. Let somebody be blessed by it in Jesus' name. Remember, the Bible said in 1 John chapter 1, he said, Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And Jesus speaking in John chapter 4, he said, For the Father seeketh for such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul speaking eventually by the Holy Spirit in Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. He said we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. So we are the people that God is seeking for and God has found us and he has made us his worshippers. That is to say that there is no distance in the realm of the spirit wherever you are hearing me right now. So together let's go into this in Jesus name. Um what I want to do with this broadcast as much as possible is to, of, of course, all our broadcasts, what we try to do is to build Jesus' consciousness. And in building Jesus' consciousness, to drive home a point that Jesus will never and can never fail you. As long as we apply our hearts to the principles and the commandments of God. The Bible said his commandments are not grievous. No. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So once we are able to capture that and begin to live a life, a conscious life of that, we will begin to walk in a daily victory. Now, in our two episodes past, uh, we, we looked at the subject of worry. Why you should not worry. You know, the failure of worry. The evil of worry. And the victories that have been made available to us in Christ Jesus. If you miss those teachings or those episodes, please go back and you will find them. You'll find them on my Facebook page, you know, on YouTube. They're there on YouTube. As a matter of fact, let me ask you, in Jesus' name, to subscribe to my YouTube. We have a lot of teachings on YouTube that will be a blessing to you, you know, all over the world to be a blessing. And they are free. So, subscribe. Let me know that you have subscribed to it. Just go there and press that subscribe button. And um, I trust God that together we are going to walk in victory unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. Alright, but in this episode, in this um, episode, you know, when a man or a person, a child of God, is able to master the act of not worrying, the next thing that is available to us is that we need to learn to live a joyful life. So many Christians are not joyful. Are, I'm not saying they are not happy. I said they are not joyful. A lot of Christians are not joyful. You know, it's as though joy has traveled in the heart of so many Christians. And, 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 that, and, and that is what I call a, a great pity. You know, a great pity. It's a pity that a lot of Christians... Do, do, you can be happy every now and then. But joy is a consistent and continuous life that we have in Christ. You know, you can be happy because you just uh, uh, paid your house rent. You can be happy because somebody just gave you money. You can be happy because you just got victory over a particular challenge. You can be happy because you just bought a car. You just bought a house. You, you, you know, so happiness comes and goes. Because it is tied to things. Happiness is tied to things. But not joy. Joy is not tied to anything. As a matter of fact, joy is a gift of God. You know, I, I wrote something here in my note. I said, joy is different from happiness. You get happy every once in a while based on what material thing you just got or you are given. This is why... You will never see anywhere in the Bible where we are told or encouraged to be happy. No. In the New Testament, we are not encouraged to be happy. No. We are told to rejoice 
in Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. We are told, we are encouraged to rejoice. In Philippians 3, 1. Please look at this. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. It's an admonition. It's an encouragement. It is the duty of every Christian to rejoice. God will not force you to rejoice. God will not beat you to rejoice. God expects you to rejoice. Because our joy is not tied to anything. Look at what the Bible said. He said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. So our joy is in the Lord. Not in material things. Not in physical things. Not, it's not promoted by what I have or I didn't have. So my not having anything cannot tamper with my joy or dictate to my joy. My having something can make me happy, emotionally happy. But that is not joy. Joy is of the Lord. It's in the Lord. That's what the Bible said. And I wrote here um, to, to help you to further see that in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 4. Put verse, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, in, you know, to further uh, 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 expantiate on it. In Philippians 4, 4. Look at what the Bible says. It says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. It's a must. It is not a plea. It is not a plea bargain. It's, God is not trying to bargain with us. You know, if you feel like, rejoice. If you don't feel like, don't rejoice. You know, but just rejoice. No, 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 no. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 3, 1 that we read. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. It's a must. We must rejoice. It's a must. God wants us to live a joyous life, a joy-filled life, a joyful life, regardless of what has happened, regardless of what your condition is, regardless of what your, uh, 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 your immediate challenges are. God wants you to live a rejoicing life. God wants you to rejoice. He is a demand. He demands it of us. The Lord demands it of us. He, he, there may not be uh, food on your table. He said, but rejoice. You don't have money in your pocket to pay your children's school fees. He said, you should rejoice. There's no, uh, your friends, the people you call your friends, just stab you at your back and they turn their back against you. He said, you should rejoice. You know, God will never tell us to do something without him seeing or providing the th something for us. As a key victory for our lives in Christ Jesus. Never. He will never ask you to do something unless there's a, a key victory he has for you. So for God to tell us to rejoice always, regardless of the condition. He said we should rejoice. It doesn't matter whether it is rain that is falling. He said rejoice. Whether it is... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, sun that is shining. He says you should rejoice. Whatever your condition, whatever your circumstance, I wish there's a way I can drive that home very deep to you. You know, many a time when things happen, we lose our joy. As though our joy is tied to things. Our joy is not tied to anything. The only person our joy is tied to is the Lord Jesus himself. He said rejoice in the Lord. He didn't say rejoice around the Lord. Or he didn't say rejoice for the Lord. He didn't say you should rejoice with the Lord. He didn't say you should rejoice by the Lord. He said you should rejoice in the Lord. And guess for how long? Always. Regardless of your condition. So if you are not rejoicing... You are literally setting yourself up against God's good, God's will, God's goodness for you. And that is why the devil takes advantage of Christians. You know, one of the things the Lord taught me many years ago is that the devil cannot access a believer unless he first of all gets that believer to be depressed. So depression is the key in the hand of the devil to oppress a believer. You can't be oppressed financially. 
Your health cannot be oppressed by the devil. Your family cannot be put under duress, under confusion, the powers and satanic attack. Unless you are first of all made to be depressed. So the devil's strategy to open up a Christian, any Christian, regardless of how long you've been born again, regardless of the tongues you speak, regardless of how many scriptures you know, regardless of all kinds of visitations that you have experienced, regardless of how good you can worship, the way the devil access any believer is to, first of all, suggest depression to that child of God. And once the person becomes depressed because of issues, because of conditions, because of what has happened, once you become depressed, you have, you have been opened up. You have opened up yourself to, to the devil to successfully oppress you in life. That's why in the ab absence of depression, in the absence of depression, the devil cannot oppress you. And depression is not possible where joy is allowed. Depression is not possible where joy is allowed. So until you refuse to rejoice, that is when you can be depressed. And when you become depressed, you are now open for the devil to successfully oppress you. Let me show you another scripture to see what the Lord said in, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Put your ESV translation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Look at this. It's a must. We, we have no choice. God is not begging us to rejoice. He, it's a mandate for every child of God. It's a mandate. We must rejoice. Rejoice. To rejoice is the will of God. And somebody says, I want to know the will of God for me. This is the will of God for you. You must rejoice. To rejoice is God's will. Look at the first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. Yay. Remember, he said we should rejoice. Number two, he said we should rejoice in the Lord. Number three, he said we should rejoice in the Lord always. We must, he said, look, when you wake up in the morning, whether you woke up on the right side of the bed or the left side of the bed, it doesn't matter. Just rejoice. That's what God says. That's all he asks for. Just rejoice. All, as far as God is concerned, just rejoice. <laughs> just, just rejoice. Someone say, Apostle, I don't understand. You know, I'll just be rejoicing as if I'm a madman or I don't know what I'm doing in life. Look, what are you doing in life? No, what, what is the thing that you are doing in life? You can't be wiser than your creator. You can't be wiser than your maker. God has an agenda that he has planned for us. And that agenda is all about victory. He said, whatever is born of God, overcometh the world. But he said, since he made you an overcomer in Christ Jesus, he said, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And then rejoice always. This God is too much. He's not begging us. He's mandating us to rejoice. It's a mandate, you know, that we must understand. And you see, uh, somebody said, um, where do I get the joy from? How, how do I when things are not going on well with me, when things are not right, look at, look at sickness, you know, sickness will not allow you, you know, nobody to help, and you say, I should rejoice. Let me tell you, you see, the day you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that day, God, it, part of the package of your salvation is joy. The package, you see, salvation came as a total package, you know, I was hearing a man uh, tonight, uh, they came to visit me, and they said something, you know, in the midst of our discussion, the man said something that made me laugh. He said somebody, a child of God, you know, had, uh, had a vision, uh, just quarreled with somebody, and then the person died. As the person was about to step into heaven, they said, no way, you can't enter. You can't enter. Because you died before you settled with that person. You know, so you go back. <laughs> I laugh. I said, look, I don't want to go, I don't want to join issues. There's no scripture for it. No. You see, salvation is a total package. The day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 1, in verse number 7, in the verse number 7, he said, in Jesus you have redemption through his blood. You have redemption. You have been bought. The redemption means you are bought. 
You are, J J God used Jesus' blood to pay for you. You were bought. And you were bought from the kingdom of darkness. According to Colossians chapter 1. You were bought from the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's dear son. In, as, part, as part of the package for your redemption in Christ. He said, and the forgiveness of sins. So forgiveness is part of the package for your redemption. Look, let me tell you. Some people think that, you know, if you don't say, Father, oh, I'm sorry, you, you know, I just had quarrel with this person, and then you died now. That means you're going to hell. There's no scripture that says so. Otherwise, God will be inconsistent. You know, redemption will not be total, will not be complete. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me show you one scripture before I let me just you know deviate a little bit. Show you this scripture and then we'll go back. You know, first John, put first John chapter 2 from verse 1. The book of first John chapter 2 from verse 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First John chapter 2, verse 1. He said, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. You see, God said, I don't want you to sin. Now that you are my child, now that you are the son, a son of God, a child of God, he said, I don't want you to sin. The word sin here, me don't make mistake. God hates sin. He hates mistakes. He hates miscalculation. He said, but, look at it. But if anyone does sin, I don't know whether it's only me that is seeing this thing. It's there in the Bible. God said, I hate sin. I don't want you to sin. You must not sin. You must not make mistake. He said, but, you know, that's God. He knows that as long as we are in this world, the enemy, the devil, will keep shooting at us. So, peradventure, in the midst of all the shootings and the temptations and the trials, we sin. He said, but if anyone sin, does sin. He said, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> people, people like to use experience instead of the scripture. Meanwhile, experience is not given to us. What is given to us is all scripture. That's what the Bible says. All scripture is given. All script, what God gave us is all scripture. Not all experience. Not all visions. Not all prophecy. Not all dreams. Because people dream and have vision according to their belief. Did you get what I said? Many a time, people dream or have vision according to their beliefs or their tradition, or their culture. They now think that that is God speaking to them. That's why you have to guard your heart with all diligence. And then open yourself to the knowledge of the truth of the word of God. He said, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. God does not want you to commit sin. He doesn't want you to mis do mistakes. He doesn't want you to fight anybody. You must not quarrel with anybody. But peradventure, the thing is so heavy, you now quarrel. So, why you are quarreling? He said, but if anyone does sin, you now quarrel. We have an advocate with the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our salvation is total. It's complete. So, the Bible said in verse 2, put verse 2, God punish ignorance. Put verse 2. Look at verse 2. Put verse 2. He said, he is the propitiation for our sins. So, Jesus remains with the Father as our advocate. You know why? He is the propitiation for our sin. The word to pro, uh, propitiate means to appease. So Jesus is, the fa is with the Father as our appeasing sacrifice. He will never leave to, he will never stop. Every time the Father sees Jesus, he sees our sacrifice. And our sacrifice is satisfied, is satisfying to him. Am I making sense here? Alright, so I haven't said that. Our salvation is total, is complete. And part of the package that we receive the day we got born again in, as our salvation in Christ Jesus. Part of the package is that joy was given to us. So you are not going to fake joy, look for joy, beg for joy, or pretend to be joyful. God said, I want you to rejoice. And I want you to rejoice in the Lord. And I want you to rejoice in the Lord always. Are you getting it? So God did not tell us that because we, we need to pretend to be joyful. <laughs> say, Uncle, what's wrong with you? God says I should rejoice. <laughs> no. No, no, no. God is not a mechanical God. 
The salvation we receive through Christ Jesus, in that salvation, part of the package of that salvation is joy. Someone say, sir, how do you know that? Look at the book of Psalm uh, 51 verse 12. David speaking by the Spirit of God prophesied. And he said, in Psalm 51 verse 12, God punished ignorance. Ah, we will drag the devil out of town in these last days. Watch. What are you talking about? Psalm 51 verse 12. Put it up, please. Put, 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 uh, he said, no, no, 51 verse 12. Not 52. Psalm 51. I need you to watch this. Watch it. Psalm 51 verse 12. Quickly, please. Put, put, it, put it quickly. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. So, where did we get our joy from? From the day we got born again. Our joy was given to us from the day from salvation the joy we have is the joy of the salvation that was given to us that we receive in christ jesus are you getting it we were, we were not giving we're not giving happiness there's no happiness in salvation it is joy that we have it is joy because joy is superior joy is in the class of god is the nature of god as a matter of fact the bible calls joy the fruit of the spirit aha in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Go there. Let's go there. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Watch this. Galatians 5, 22. That's what he said. Put Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. The day you got born again, the fruit of the Spirit that you have, that you produce, that you are producing now, is joy. You have joy in your spirit. You are not going to look for it, so you don't need to pretend. That you are joyful. No, it's that it's right there inside of you. The day you got born again, your inside that was changed. Part of the package that God infused into you is joy. Thank you, precious Father. Hey, what are you talking about? The devil is in trouble. Look at him. But the fruit of the spirit is first of all love. Number two, joy. Aradagasata. Believers don't pretend to be joyful. We don't pretend. Joy is part of our nature. We inherited rejoicing as a nature. It's a nature. It's the product of our spirit. Our regenerated human spirit. We have joy inside of us. We have it. We're not going to look for it. We don't look for joy. We have it inside. We are loaded. We are born with joy. Uh, let me show you some more. Let me show you some more. Let me show you some more. Agada, bada, elede. Because I'm taking you somewhere right now. No, look at it. Uh, in, in, see, the joy of the Lord is the fruit of the goodness of the Spirit. So when he says this man has goodness inside of him, part of it is joy. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9. Put Ephesians 5, 9, please. Watch this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9. Look at what he said. He said, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness. So joy is good. Ooh. Remember, but remember that joy is the fruit of the spirit. And the Bible said the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness. It manifests as good things. So joy is God gave us joy as the good that we will manifest. Relax. Relax. You are not going to pretend. It's not a it's not an act of it's not a pretentious thing. It's reality. We have it. We have it the day we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. The, the fruit of joy is what we produce in our inner man, in our spirit, by the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Are you getting that? So it's not that we're pretending to be joyful. No, we, we, we don't pretend. This is our life. This is who we are. This is, this is us. So the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, Watch this. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Following this truth now that we so far, the Bible now says to us in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Watch Isaiah 12 3. Put, put Isaiah. He said, therefore with joy. Are you, are you seeing this thing? Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So, meaning, why did God give us joy? Why did he give us joy as the fruit of the spirit that we bear, that we produce as good thing? He said with it, with joy, the provision that God has for us inside salvation. Remember, 
I said salvation came as a total package for everything in every area. If it's for healing, if it's for deliverance, if it's for prosperity, if it's for safety, that's divine protection, it is, if it is for breakthrough, if it's for marriage, if it's for children, for husband, for job, whatever it is. Salvation is sozo. It's a complete package. And God said, this package that I gave you, that you have come into, because you and I have come into the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. He said, this package you have come into. Ah, yeah, God. Holy Spirit, grant these people understand. This package, total, totalness, that the Bible calls salvation for us, that you have come into. The Bible said to draw those things. To draw those things. To draw those things. Whether it's healing. Whether it's safety. Whether it's progress. Whether it's victory. Whether it's success. Whether it's deliverance. Are, are you understanding him? He said, the, the instrument you use to draw water from this package called salvation is joy. Can you see why the devil wants you sad? Can you see why the devil is trying by all means to get you to be depressed? Don't you understand? Look, I'm going to come back to this Hebrew, um, Isaiah chapter 12, verse, six, verse 3. You know, because the Holy Ghost just spoke to my heart. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 6, I think. In Hebrews 9, 6. Put, put Hebrews 9, 6, please. Watch this. Watch, watch. Hebrews 9, 6. Let's, let's go there. Please, quickly. So that I can, I can kill time. Sharp, sharp. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 6. What, I want you to see something. Watch this. In the Bible said, um, uh, no, chapter 6, verse 9. Sorry. Chapter 6, 9. Quickly. He said, be, but beloved. You see, God is addressing you and I. Beloved, my children, my son. He said, we are persuaded. We, we are, oh, glory be to God. He said, we are persuaded better things. Watch that better things. Watch better things. He said, better things of you. And the th he said, things that accompany. The word accompany means they follow salvation. They follow being born again. There are things, once you become born again, once you come into salvation in Christ Jesus, there are things that follow you, that follow being born again. They are part of the benefit of being born again. The Bible said there are, those things are better things. Can't you see? He said those things are better things. You see, once, <laughs> oh, Christianity. Christianity is sweet. Christianity is sweet. And it's now that we are starting real Christianity, raw Christianity. You see, God said, in, once you, Anybody that becomes born again, there are packages that comes with being born again. It's like you are employed, you know, in an oil company, you know, or you become an ambassador of your nation. You know, as an ambassador of that nation, nation there are packages that follows that office. There are benefits that follows that office. All right. So the Bible said the same thing with salvation. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there are benefits that follow it. There are packages that follow it. The God calls those benefits, those packages, better things. That's what he calls them. Better things. Better things follow them. So go back to that Isaiah chapter 12, verse uh, 3. That will look. So put this one in mind and go back to Isaiah 12, verse 3, quickly. He said, therefore with joy you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. You know, there are packages, better things, not better thin, but better things with S. That's why it is called wells of salvation. You know, healing, breakthrough, prosperity, long life, divine protection, lifting, favor, whatever the well in salvation. You need joy to draw it. Are you seeing him? So Isaiah said, or God said to Isaiah, again, watch this. God now said to Isaiah, in Isaiah 55, verse 12, Oh, this is something I should teach like for a week. And I'm trying to package and rush for you. But I trust the Holy Ghost to give you understanding. Look at Isaiah 55, verse 12. Look at this. He said, for you shall go out with joy. God said, no matter the news you hear, no matter what they say, no matter what is happening, no matter the condition, no matter 
what is happening in your environment. When it is your time or your turn to go out, he said, you go out with joy. Look, there's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. Um, I won't go out with joy, but I won't be sad. There's, no, there's nothing like that. Once you don't go out with joy, you are exposed to the devil. Remember, you are not going to fake your joy. You have joy. It's there in your spirit, man. Joy is in your heart. Don't worry, we're going to learn how to provoke joy. How to stay it up. The joy of the Lord is in your heart. It's there already. You have joy. It's not something you pretend to, to have. At salvation, joy was given to you as part of the fruit of your own human spirit. Do, do you understand that? It's part of the fruit of your spirit. When you wake up in the morning, Father, thank you. Today is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, whatever the condition is, I've decided today is the day that the Lord has made. It's my choice. It's my choice. This is who I am. This is what God has made me. This is what God gave me. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So he said to Isaiah, you shall go out with joy. You go out with joy. No matter, as a matter of fact, he was talking to them as at that time because they were in the land of Babylon. That the enemy was oppressing them. He said, but I am telling you, when it is time for you to go out, go out with joy. That's what God said. Go out with joy. I don't care whatever is happening. Go out. Let them tell you they said this thing cannot work. He said, you just go out with joy. He said, once you go out with joy, look at it. You shall be led forth with peace. Do you know what that means? If you decide, I will be joyful. Whether I have the thing or not, I will be joyful. I refuse to be sad. I refuse the enemy making me depressed. I refuse to live a negative life. I refuse it. I choose to be joyful. The Bible says once you make up your mind to be joyful and to actually go out with joy, he said you shall be led forth with peace. That means you just go with joy. Peace will go in front of you. You, you know the meaning of peace? That means whatever is supposed to disturb you, you know, that angel called peace will say, shh, quiet. Shh, it's coming. Don't disturb him. Shh, stop that. In the realm of the spirit, that's what's going on. That's what will be going on for you. And remember that Jesus is the prince of peace. In Ephesians 2, the Bible calls him our peace. Are you seeing that? So when you go out with joy, you have activated Jesus to lead you forth. Jesus will lead you forth. And as Jesus leads you forth, look at this. Look at it. He said the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing because of you. You know what the mountains and the hills represent? Oppositions, failure, bad news, sorrow, disappointment. He said as you are coming with joy and you are led forth by the Lord Jesus himself, the Prince of Peace. He said the mountains and the hills when they see you, they will begin to rejoice. Ah, this is the person we are supposed to allow to pass. <laughs> oh God, we didn't know you would come around today. <laughs> but thank God say you are passing. Just pass, pass. You know, we know the people we are waiting for. You know, the next man coming. Ah, if you like, make a cry from that to tomorrow. He won't pass, so we must hinder him. But as for you, he said they will, they will break forth. They will break forth before you into singing. Now watch this. He said, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, every time the Bible uses the word trees, the, you know, it is interchangeably used for humans. He said, as you go out with joy and you are led forth with peace. And that's Jesus Christ. He said, the trees of the field. The field is your business. It's what concerns you. It's your immediate circumstance. Your immediate condition. He said, they will clap. So your condition will look at you and begin to clap. Wow, Victor, thank you for coming. Please pass. Overcomer. <laughs> More than conqueror. Greater one. Than the one that the greater one lives inside. Are you getting him? So God is not asking us to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And to rejoice always as a punishment. No. There are things that have been set in place. Because of the salvation that we have in Jesus. So when you respond to God, when you respond to his, his words, his command, his, his counsel, you position yourself aright. You, you, you automatically position yourself aright for victory, for celebration. You, you know, when you see some of our brethren, every now and then, they think that Christianity is a calling to war. Every night, 
Ulwa, eh, where you are? All the enemies, fall and die. Leave me, all of you. Leave me, all of you. Leave me. Let me go. Let me go. And then in the morning you see them. They look sad. They look worn out. They look spent. You, you know, sometimes when you see some Christians, you wonder, is Jesus real? Be, because the, the way they, the way they live their Christian life, as though the enemy is stronger than Jesus Christ. God forbid. Ah, abomination. The Bible said he conquered whatever needed to be conquered. He led captivity captive. He led captivity captive. I'm telling you, the devil can't stop that. You know, just put it close to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He led captivity captive. That's what the Bible said. Jesus did not do half job. He did a complete and total job. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like now, see, our gen, as I'm teaching, our generator just packed up. Glorious, beautiful generator we have just packed up. And light goes up. And then, am I going to start panicking? Oh, my, my viewers are going to feel embarrassed. They, I'm going to feel, what are you talking about? He said, be led forth with joy. Rejoice always. See, Jesus is giving you opportunity to learn this act from me. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look, Christianity is the most beautiful and well packaged by the Lord Jesus Christ. That devil is a liar. Do not allow the devil to depress you. Don't let him ever at any time suggest to you in whatever way at all that God has left you. That you are on your own. That you are going to be defeated. The Bible said that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The one inside of you is greater. The Jesus but the Holy Ghost inside of you is greater. And this is the time for you to demonstrate it. This is the time for you to walk in him. To prove to that devil. You can't hold me down. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be held down. Because if Jesus resurrected. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Is available to you and I. So the Bible said. You shall go out. You go out with joy. No matter what news you hear. Go out with joy. Make sure you go out with joy. Don't do, oh, oh God, look at me again. Oh, you want to get visa. They, they, tell, they say they don't give visa now. They don't answer people. They just keep disappointing people. Everybody that went for that job, they keep disappointing them. God said, when it is your turn to go, don't listen to what they said. He said, you go out with joy. Refuse to be depressed. If you are not depressed, the devil cannot oppress you in that area, in that job, in that your desire. In that your expectation. He can't. God forbid. He can't. He can't. He can't oppress you. You cannot be oppressed. He can't sit down on your progress. As a matter of fact, he can't hinder you. No. Because the victory has been given to you. What God will use to set you apart and make you experience a life of continuous victory is inside you. It's not in the hand of the devil. It's not in the hand of anybody. No, it's in you. So that's why God wants you consistently to rejoice rejoice always rejoice always hallelujah rejoice rejoice that's what he said rejoice it's the fruit of the spirit it is the life that we live it's the life of god in us thank you lord jesus he said with joy you shall draw from the well of salvation with joy, you will draw, you will pull. Ah, my God. Let me show you real quick um, some five benefits of joy or rejoicing. Let me show you real quick how how we 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 through joy the things that we draw, you know, with joy that without joy we can't draw them. But before I do that, I want to share this with you first of all. I want to say to you. That joy is the sign of true faith in God. Joy is the sign of true faith. You know, someone say, I have faith in God. And you are sad. You don't, have, you, you, you don't have faith in God. You have faith, but you are not exercising it. If you are born again, you have faith. But you are not exercising that faith in God. Because if you have faith in God, the sign of your faith 
in God is joy. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 4, he said Abraham believed God against his condition. He believed. Guess what the next verse says? Giving glory to God. Woo! He went home giving glory to God. That was the sign of his faith. The sign that Abraham believed was joy. He became joyful. Do you know? The Bible said Jesus was talking to his disciples. And Jesus knew that the hour had come. The minute, the time, the period had come. When he must go to the cross. To go and die for the sin of the world. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus needed to pull strength one more time. Otherwise, he would never have succeeded. He would never have gone through that thing successfully. Do you know what happened? The Bible said, in that same hour, Jesus rejoiced. He rejoiced in the Holy Ghost. He rejoiced in the Spirit. Woo! As soon as Jesus rejoiced, he pulled strength. The strength to go through the beatings. They battered him. He was bruised. Wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. He was beaten, despised, and rejected. He was wounded. All kinds of things were done to Jesus. But thank God he rejoiced before it all began. That's where he pulled strength. That's where he pulled strength. He pulled strength. The Bible said, seeing the joy that was ahead of him, he despised the pain and the shame of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. And I challenge you to rise up in joy. I challenge you to pick up in joy. Regardless of this, your condition. They said it will not happen, but you rejoice and see. Show to the devil that you have faith in God. The Bible said in, 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 in Psalm uh, uh, 5, verse 11. I, I need to read this to you. In Psalm 5, verse 11. Let me, let me pull it and read it. My God in heaven. Woo, hallelujah. Let me look for it. There's a scripture in Psalm 5, verse 11. Um, I don't have it in my note here. But I still know it offers. You can check it yourself. You know. Psalm 5 verse 11 say, um, it says, it says, let them have joy. Let them have joy that trust in thee. Ah! Let them rejoice that trust in thee. Only those who trust, manifest, exhibit, show joy. They rejoice regardless of their condition. Amagadayada. Ezutara. Ezua. In the face of challenges, in the face of impossibility, we are still rejoicing because it's a sign of our faith. Because we know he whom we believe and we are persuaded that he can turn fire to ice water. He can turn a no way to a way. He can make the mountain to come down low. And he can, he can de demand that the valley be exalted for our sake. Refuse to be sad. Refuse to doubt. Your joy is the sign of your faith. And God is looking to you to rejoice. He wants you to rejoice. Hallelujah. See joy. See joy. We refuse to doubt. That's what the Bible said. We refuse to doubt. Joy is the sign that we truly, our faith is truly fixed in God. That's the, that's the being of joy. That's what the psalmist said. Joy is the sign our faith is in God. That we have faith. You know, it's not that we don't have faith. We have faith. But our choosing to joy or to rejoice is a sign that the faith we have truly is in God. It's in God. The God that does not know limitation. The God that does not know failure. Put Psalm 11 verse 5. He doesn't know failure. Just watch this. Let me show you. Can you put Psalm 11 verse 5 real quick? Look at it. What are you talking about? Stop living your life as though disappointment has upper hand over you. He said, we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Hey, yeah, God, God punish disappointment. Disappoint waiting. We disappoint disappointment. We, we, we disappoint disappointment. We subject the devil. We, we bring him into order. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. Look at him. No, no. Uh, 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 verse 5, 11. You know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What are you talking about? Watch this. Thank you, Father. He said, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Are you seeing him? 
Only those whose trust is truly in the Lord would, would rejoice in the face of their condition, their challenge, their trials, their temptation. In the face of it. Only those whose faith, whose trust is in the Lord will rejoice. You can't be fearful and rejoice. <laughs> so joy is a sign your faith is truly in the Lord. Are you seeing him? He said, but let all those, allow all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. He said, let them ever shout for joy. All the people whose trust, genuinely their faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, let them ever shout for joy. Woo, glory be to God. That's why you see that some Christians, they look so sad. They look spent. They look worn out. Because their faith is no more in the Lord. They are overpowered and overcome by their condition and circumstance. Look, are you believing God for the fruit of the womb? I'm going to show you how, the, how joy can benefit you. Stop being sad. Don't let the devil corner you. Remember what I said initially. The devil cannot oppress you until he has first of all succeeded in depressing you. If you without depression, you can never be oppressed. Go and think about it. And the reason for depression, it is the Absence of joy. Rejoice. Abu Galada. E Galada. E Zegadebedegaye. E Gulebede. E Zumbadaya. All right. I want to just quickly run. I have so many things, but because of time, because my time is spent, you know. I want to run five beautiful benefits for rejoicing to, by you. Let me show you five beautiful reasons you should rejoice. You should follow God's counsel. God's advice and actually rejoice. Let me give you five benefits. <laughs> in in uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Put Nehemiah. Not Jeremiah. Nehemiah. So if you have it in your Bible, open it there. It's there. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. That's the number one benefit for, joy, for you to rejoice. No matter your condition. He said, then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them to whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a holy day, is a holy, is holy unto our Lord. Neither be you sorrow. Why? He said, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory be to God. He didn't say your own joy. He said, the joy of the Lord. Remember that our joy was given to us as part of the package for salvation. Remember that. And it's the fruit of the Spirit that we produce. And the Bible said, it is for good or good thing, or goodness. Are you seeing it now? So, right now, he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Have you ever thought of when things happen, you eventually oh, collapse or become discouraged. You know why? Because you lost your strength. And why did you lose your strength? You refused to rejoice. The joy of the Lord that is in you, that is in you, is your strength. And you see why the devil wants you to be depressed? I refuse to be depressed. I don't get depressed. You know, some Christians say you can't be up all the time. Sometimes you are low. Sometimes you are up. I don't understand that. I am up all the time. I force myself to be up. It's a decision, decision I made for myself. I must always be up. It doesn't mean that I don't have conditions that want to make me feel low. I tell the low to come up. Otherwise, I leave the low low while I'm up. Am I making sense? The joy of the Lord is my strength. So when you refuse to Rejoice. Strength will be sapped from you. You'll be drained of strength. I want to see Christians, some Christians, they look tired. They look worn out. And then they dress, you know, turtle neck dressing. You wonder, is it that Jesus is wicked? Or Jesus traveled to Ibadan? Or did he travel to Moscow? You know, because as though Jesus is not around, you know, and, it, and meanwhile, Jesus is right there. His name is still Emmanuel, the God with us. And he has gone, be, be, he has even gone further than being with us. 
He lives inside of us. He said we are the temple of the Lord. The, the spirit of the Lord lives inside of us. Are you getting that? So the, the reason they look spent is because they refuse to rejoice. They refuse to rejoice. Ah! Ah, no, no, no. Yeah, take us out. Number two. Let me show you another benefit. In, in Proverbs, uh, I mean Psalm 3, verse 1 that we read before. I mean Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 that we read before. The book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 that we read before. Look at this. It says, finally my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. This is what God said we should do. Not to do it is to pitch ourselves against God. Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. Ah! Eh? All, the, all, the, all the witches and wizards, all the enemies of my father's house, all the witches, all the wizards, all the abandoned spirit, my new water spirit, that want to deal with me, that want to fight me, in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, father and I, father and I, father. All through midnight, the solution is very clear. He said, rejoice, you will live in safety. I didn't say it. He said, but for you, to rejoice is safe. Just practice it. You will see that the enemy will advise himself against touching you. Only a fly that refuses to take advice and is very foolish, that goes to perch on a pot that is steaming hot on the stove. Don't you understand? Joy makes you untouchable or near able to the devil. He will throw things at, at you, but he can't touch you. He said to rejoice puts you in safety. You are safe. It makes you safe. Ah! It does not only produce strength. It brings security. Am I making sense? This has nothing to do with fasting. Just, you know, people, have you seen people that fast? <clears throat> Some of them say they are doing 50 days fasting, 20, 21 days fasting. The fasting is full of complaint and sadness. And then I ask myself, how can you be fasting and you are sad? The person that is not fasting and is eating and rejoicing in the Lord is far better. So that fasting is nothing but hunger strike. Rejoice! That's what he said. Rejoice! He said it is safe for you. It is safety for you. It will put you in safety. It will make you safe. To make you safe. Whatever they send against you from anywhere, whatever, whether which coven, marine spirit, whatever devil that has shot anything against you, once they meet you rejoicing, you are protected. It's a divine order. Thank you, precious Father. Look at number three. Let me share the third one with you. Hey... You know, so many people are finding hearing from God very difficult. You know, that's why you see that some people, they go and lock, the, lock themselves up inside room for so many days. They say, oh, oh God, wait till it happen. They say, I want to hear from God. As if God is so dumb. Eh? God can't speak. Until you go and lock yourself up because before you now put uh, water in his mouth for him for, to be able to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hearing from God is very easy. Put Isaiah 30, verse 29 and to 31. What oh, punish the devil? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 to 31. Hearing from God is the easy, is one of the easiest things to hear from God. You want to hear from God? You, you know, somebody say, I don't know how to hear from God. God has not spoken to me since. The reason you are not hearing, he's speaking, but you are not hearing. The reason you are not hearing is because there's no joy in your heart. The joy in your spirit, you are not provoking it. You're not bringing it forth. You're not exercising it. Look at it. Isaiah 30 verse 29. He said, You shall have a song. Ewo. I didn't say it. Oh. I didn't say it. Now, what kind of a song? He, he didn't say, You shall have. One day I will go to heaven. One day I will go to heaven. One day I will go to heaven. To meet my Lord. That person is more sad than sadness itself. That's a sad Christian. What? <laughs> we 
Which heaven is that kind of a person going to? You know, you look, I don't even think the gate of heaven will be open to that kind of a person because he will contaminate heaven. You know, he will bring sadness to heaven. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He said, you, mo- you shall have a song. Have a song. Sing songs. If you don't have any Christian song that you can remember to sing, sing one of them songs. Don't be like them that sat down in Babylon. And they are, they are telling them to sing. Can you imagine? Zionists. People from the city of God. The enemy is telling them, sing God's one of those songs in Zion. They said, no, we will not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Hey, whoa, look at, look at God's people. Look at God's people. He said, we will, we, we, uh, by the rivers of Babylon, yeah, we go, yeah, we go, yeah, Who sent them? Who sent them? The enemy is even mocking them. He said, sing God's one of the songs of Zion. Yay! Who will sing one of the songs of Zion? That the Lord our God is good. He is a great God. A mighty God. Let somebody turn it into a song. As we begin to see him. As we begin to worship. As we begin to praise him. And well up joy in our heart. He will descend. He will show his glory. He will manifest his activities. He will perform his wonders. But instead of them to sing. The enemy is even encouraging them. Sing one of the songs. Just one. Just sing one of the songs of Zion. They said, no, we will not sing the lost song in a strange land. That's why they, they remain in the strange land. That's why they remain there. You and I need to learn to sing. Yay! If there's no song to sing, Motifoni Badura. Ah! Bogwaye Temowa. Egbodo tori ba fun oluwa eyin egbe da yo ku jo re edide keyin oluwa hallelujah ma lori ti wa hallelujah wa ninu se wa baraye fe baraye ko wa tori tori ba fun oluwa singa be he say you shall you shall have a song in he said as in the night the night means that time that you are sorrowful sing burst into joy he said you shall have a song as in the night that is when you look as if things are not right things are not working things are sad things are down things are looking gloomy he said have a song break for you to sing him he said a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as you are singing he said let there be gladness of your heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come to the mountain of the of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. He knows what is in your heart. Even as you are rejoicing, as you are singing. Look at verse 30. Abalete, Ebu, Daddy Pu, See Bible now. He said, And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Aro Sataba. Somebody said, I don't know how to hear God. You are not hearing because you are too sad. Sadness and depression is not allowing you to hear the voice of God. He said, when you have a song and gladness of heart with the song, he said, the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. God punish the devil. You go here. Don't enter bathroom doing, hmm. Name. Hmm. Oh, salam. Hmm. Don't enter bathroom that way. Enter bathroom telling him, Abba, Abba, Father, with whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. He give that to all men equally without partiality. Look at yourself in the mirror and dust yourself. God punish the devil. Tell that devil, Satan, I may be down now, I'm not out yet. For he will pick me up again. For when a righteous man falls seven times, he will rise seven times. Woo! Walk yourself up. Stay up yourself. He said, you will hear the voice of God. He will cause you to hear his voice. And shall show the lightning down of his arm. Uh, and the indignation of his anger. And with the flame of a devouring fire. And scattering and tempest. And he- oh, beleto. Woo! Oh, I'm not happy that time is running fast. Oh, put verse 31. Oh, yeah, that goes. No, no, no. He said, for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrians be beaten down, which smote with the rod. You will hear a specific word that will calm you down and defeat your wickedness. I mean, defeat the wickedness of the wicked. 
perplex your situation. Bring your condition under divine arrest. To hear God is very simple. As you go into the bathroom to go and shower, begin to rejoice. <laughs> Thank you, Father. There is no reason for you to rejoice. Force yourself as you are going. You will hear a major direction. He will speak. The Bible says he shall put verse 30. Put verse 30. He said, and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. You don't need to worry yourself to hear his voice. He will make you hear his voice. The condition is very clear. Have a song and make a, gl a, a glad heart. With a glad heart. He said, you will hear his voice. One of these, I'm going to teach on how to hear the voice of God. You know, it's men of God, a people that do not study the word of God, that try to make hearing God very difficult. As if God is, you, you can't hear God's voice. What are you talking about? We live in Christ. We are the product of God. We have, we have his DNA. We are born of God. His Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If he doesn't speak, how will they hear? We hear. Oh, God, I heard that. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Woo! Ma, ma, ma. Number four. Joy is God's formula for healing for your body. Joy is God's formula for healing for your body. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Please put Proverbs 17, 22. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Proverbs 17, 22. Thank you, Abba Father. Watch this. A merry heart. The word merry here actually means joyful. A joyful heart doeth good like medicine. He said, but a broken spirit dried up the bones. Sadness, sorrow will dry up the bone. It will kill the person from inside. He said, but joy, rejoicing with joy as you allow joy from your heart, from inside of you, as you allow the joy of the Lord from inside of you. He said it will turn to medicine for your body. Medicine. You will be amazed how you will be revived. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, because of time. Oh, my time is spent. But can I give you one more? Let me give you one more. I got to give you one more. You know, somebody said to me one time, uh, one of my sons in ministry said to me, you know, he said to me, he said, sir, why is it that he's doing social business, he's not working, he do this business, he's not working. He said, look, he knows that the enemies are attacking him. I said, look, no matter who is attacking you, they do not have the power or the right to subject your business to failure. They don't have it. Unless you give it to them. He says, he sir, what do you mean? I say, very simple. The Bible said the only time the business or work of a child of God begins to become stagnated and go down is when that child of God refuses to rejoice regardless of whatever the issue concerning his or her business. In the Bible says in the book of Joel, Joel, Joel chapter 1, verse 12. I'm going to close with that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I, got about that. I challenge you to rejoice after this one. I challenge you to rejoice. I dare you to rejoice. I dare you to look at your condition and tell that your condition. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. Whether the solution looks visible or not, I know he whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that whatever I've committed into his hands is able to keep. <laughs> Look at it. In Joel chapter 1 verse 12, he said, the vine is dried up. The vine means the business. It's dried up. And the fig tree languishes. Even the small, small petty things that are supposed to bring him, bring him money, they are languishing. He said the program, program tree and the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field, eh, including the people that are supposed to help, he said, are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Not because there are witches and wizards. Rejoice! You will be amazed how somebody that has forgotten about you, God will stir them up to remember you and become your helper. Oh, 
Every night you are doing night vigil. When will you sleep? That's why in the afternoon you are always aggressive. Because you have not had enough sleep. So you, I, I'm waiting on the Lord. Where did you go? Which board meeting is he? So God is in the board meeting. I'm waiting for him. Which board meeting? How about you heard that he neither slumber nor sleep? How about you heard that he dwells in you? How about you heard that he is his delight? You are his beloved and accepted in Christ Jesus. And God willingly has given us freely all things because of Jesus. But as long as you refuse to rejoice, that is what the enemy is using to access you. To oppress you. Today I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Rejoice. Go to bed rejoicing. Refuse to close your eyes in bed in sadness. If there is nothing, at, if, if, if you try to sleep and you couldn't sleep, put on music. Am I making sense? If you don't have any Christian music, if it's Michael Jackson you have, play Michael Jackson. Start dancing. You want to be starting something. You got to be starting. Stop this religious jargon. St walk yourself. Walk yourself by all means. Walk yourself. I I'm not making sense to somebody here. If you don't have a play fella, zombie, oh, zombie, zombie. Oh. Do something. Do something. Until you are able to break out of that cloud of depression the devil is trying to cast on you. Break out of it. And stir up the joy of the Lord in your, your spirit, man. The Bible said when Jesus knew that it was time for him to start the journey of the punishment for our redemption. He said Jesus sp spinned. That's what the Bible said. He spinned like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson lesson for, he learned it from Jesus. He spinned. The Bible said he rejoiced in the spirit. I checked up the translation. He said Jesus spinned. Woo! He rejoiced. I don't know if you know that. When you, are, you know that they are going to beat you and kill you. That's not the time to rejoice. If Jesus had been sad, he would have lost his, lost his strength to get to Calvary. Hebrews 12 says, seeing the joy that was set before him. Ah. Seeing the joy that was set before him. He endured the shame of the cross. Don't you understand? Jesus used joy to conquer the pain he was going to go through. He used joy to conquer it. He used joy to conquer the shame, the beating. So while they were beating him, already strength was there. <laughs> I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the joy of the Lord begin to well up in your heart. That with joy you begin to draw from this well of salvation at every point that need shows up for you in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of heaviness over you. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor. And a heavy lady, he doesn't want you to be heavily lady. He doesn't want you to be pressurized. Don't let any man of God, any pastor, put pressure, the burden of religion on you. Don't let them. Don't let them. As a matter of fact, get out of that church. Any church you go, and the man of God's message, or what is happening in the church, is beginning to become a weight, a burden. A pressure on you. Get out of that church. Get out of it. God does not want you to be burdened. Because once you come under any burden, Lucifer will access you through it. Paul said, he said, men came secretly to spy out our liberty. He said, but as for you, stand firm in the liberty where Christ has called you. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 1. That's what he said. Galatians 5.1. Put it up, please. Let me, let me give you that free of charge. Don't allow anybody to, to help you to become too heavy that you cannot be joyful. Ah! Hey! Look at it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. The word liberty here means freedom. Wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not, don't be, don't be, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't let them put weight on you. 50 days fasting. What are you looking for? Look, we are about to get to the end of the year pretty soon. And then January will start. And some people will be doing 100 days fasting again. They say, our church, we are doing 50 days fasting. 100 days fasting for a new year. What is wrong with, into your Lord? When will you free yourself? 
When will you enter a year joyfully, not mournfully? Dan Gote does not do 100 days fasting for a new year. He's the richest man in Africa. Look at Bill Gates. I can't, I can't, I've never heard Dan Go, Bill Gates do seven days fasting. How, can, how come you that have Jesus Christ, the king? I don't. Let me, let me go. Because when, when we are teaching you the truth, some people will be getting angry. I don't know what you're offended about. I don't know what you're angry about. With all your 50 days fasting that your geo gave you, your 100 days fasting that your geo, that whoever gave you, that you have done, show me this 2020. Have you been better than last year? Get out. I'm sorry. No, I want to tell the devil, I'm not sorry. Satan, get out of here. In the name of Jesus. Don't let anybody put burden on you anymore. Free yourself. Come into the liberty where we have been called. Learn to rejoice. Do you know the heart that rejoices is a loving heart? A heart that is sad, a heart that is depressed, is a very angry heart. Food for thought. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray the peace of God over you your family, your loved ones, and everything you stand to represent in the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, please, I'm going to need you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Just tell him, Jesus, I thank you because you died for me. Thank you because you are alive for my sake. I give you my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, precious Father, for saving me. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, you know, we will not close without me asking you to give, give joyfully. The Bible says God loves a joyful giver. Are you seeing it? Everything about us is joy. That's why salvation has all kinds of wells inside. So what you used to draw from any part of salvation, the well of any part of salvation is joy, including giving. If you want to give and let your giving become a blessing to you in return, you must give joyfully. You see, for God loves a cheerful or a joyful giver. Give joyfully. I'm going to ask you to give. You know, some of you, my, our teachings are a blessing to you, but you don't see the need to, for you to be a blessing to us with your substance to give. It's not right. It's not right. I'm going to encourage you to give. You know, once we finish, use your phone. Send, send something. And just joyfully do something. You know, joyfully give. Tonight, right now, right now, I challenge you right now. Joyfully give. Forget about whoever is getting angry. I don't bother myself with anybody getting angry. Eh? He's telling them to joyfully forget about them. People will always talk. People are jobless. There are so many people who are jobless all over the world. And then some of them that have physical job, they don't have spiritual job. You know, so you don't blame people. You know, so you have to just continue and do the right thing. So I challenge you, give right now in Jesus' name. And the Lord bless your seed. Multiply your seed soon in Jesus' precious name. And if you want to give, if you want to do transfer, Please do to Zenith Bank, 1001-488-167. 1001-488-167. Please, above all, share this teaching. Let it help somebody. You know, let it encourage somebody. There may be somebody that wants to commit suicide. Let them just hear this teaching. It will help them. There may be somebody that is at the brink of giving up. You know, a pastor sent me a message that he's tired. He was ready to just throw away everything and then run away. And then he heard one of my teachings and the Lord used it to bring him back, to restore him, you know. So please, share it with somebody. God bless you for doing so in the name of Jesus. Until I come your way next time, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. And I am signing out. Bye-bye.